This last year had some incredible games, and it inspired me to look into game development. Again. This time, it's going to be a small project and prioritize a simple prototype. Pixel art in Aceprite and 2D game development in Godot seem like perfect tools, so this is the story of starting a game dev project. Jumping into Godot with tutorials, I really liked its clean scripting and node-based workflow. The movement math confused me a little, so I did a crash course reminder of linear algebra, and then I made this bouncy ball room just to make sure I was understanding the 2D velocity basics. Then I dove into Aceprite and pixel art. I'll keep practicing here, but it's important to me that the core visual identity of the game is original artwork. And here's a draft of the player character with animations for different situations. The game premise is you'll drive this sci-fi sphere through side-scrolling levels and do precision platforming with various abilities. So the next thing was canvas sizes, mainly how many pixels is the screen supposed to be and how does pixel art scaling work for a video game. After a couple of fantastic videos from Adam Giannis, it all made sense and I made a cheat sheet and I realized I drew my player sprite for an incorrect resolution. It was too big for the small one and too small for the big one. Awesome. So after redrawing my player sprite without animation since I learned my lesson, it was time for the infamous blank project screen in a new program moment. Always intimidating because now you don't have a tutorial telling you what to do next. I looked into Godot's project settings for a pixel art specific project setup, painted platforms with some Kenny tiles, set up a basic player object, and it all culminated in this very humble beginning. <laughs> I didn't like how the camera was bouncing up and down with the player, so now that's locked. Also didn't like how you could land on corners while it's supposed to be a sphere, so now you slide off of them. And then it was time to adjust the basic movement from being an immediate direction change into something that had momentum, like a vehicle. The default jump and getting pulled back down from gravity worked totally fine, I just tuned the values to feel snappier. Moved all of the velocity updates to draw every frame instead of just drawing on physics ticks. That way it visually runs smoother on higher frame rates. Then wrote the first lines of code for the game. To get those momentum effects, there's now an accelerator input and a braking input. You accelerate over time up to a top speed and then you cap out at that speed. You can brake to slow down to zero. And if you brake while at or below zero, you'll engage a reverse gear of sorts. And if you do nothing, you'll coast back to zero. So accelerating and then coasting will bring you to a stop, but accelerating and then braking will bring you to a stop faster. I really wanted this kind of weight and momentum effect to be in the horizontal movement, and the basic idea is there now, and the numbers can be easily tuned down the line. Now all this worked great at 144 FPS because that's what I was running when I made it, but I had seen the developer of Thronefall yelling about delta time, so I capped the frame time to 60 FPS, and there were some issues. Couple things needed changing to make all of the momentum effects be frame rate independent. The code I showed earlier had already been corrected, just for reference, but in general, there's certain things that need to happen on specific frames, like the velocity from a jump. It's just one frame that applies a bunch of force. But other things should happen in only as much magnitude per frame as the delta time would have allowed, like the effect of gravity to counteract that jump over time. If you had the full effect of gravity every frame, your character wouldn't be able to get off the ground. And then the first ability, an air dash, because every platformer needs an air dash. So I started with the same idea as the jump where a ton of force is applied all in one frame, but then the acceleration code was immediately overriding it and blending and doing weird stuff. So what I came up with is when you hit the air dash button, it applies the speed boost, disables the pedal inputs, and starts a cooldown timer that lasts a quarter of a second. From there, two things happen. When the cooldown timer reaches zero, it emits a signal that re-enables the inputs. And two, in that quarter of a second, I need to blend off all of that excess speed, so there's an override at the bottom of the controller focused on reducing the excess dash speed back down to the normal top speed. And if you dash while at top speed, it will take exactly a quarter of a second to scrub back down, because I made the rate of excess speed cutoff four times as much as the dash velocity. So over the course of a second, the rate only needs a quarter of a second to scrub all the initial speed. And then we have an air dash. Maybe it seems simple, or maybe there's better ways to do it, but I was so happy when this worked. 
uh, this player script really felt like the project had started. I don't want these to be too long, so we'll cut it here. Hope that was interesting and or entertaining. I'm definitely having a lot of fun so far, and this series is hopefully going to kind of chronicle the journey of making my first game. So we'll start with more abilities in the next video, and if you're wondering just what kind of YouTube channel this is supposed to be, I'm also wondering that. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.